Immaculate of Gulu. The Reverend Sisters from Mary Immaculate of Gulu and other congregations who may be present here and all of us, the Christians, are motto on I congratulate sisters who have just celebrated their silver jubilee. Congratulations. I congratulate sisters who have just celebrated their golden jubilee. And the one and only, the, the powerful sister who has celebrated the diamond jubilee. I have been a beneficiary of the teachings of the reverend sisters and a big part of my moral fabric was shaped by the reverend sisters <laughs> being human first and foremost in my view your grace is very important in our day-to-day -day lives that's why you managed to recognize me as a minister of education you also recognized me when I came here as a villager, and now again you have recognized me as a vice president. I thank you very sincerely, together with all the church, for prioritizing the aspect of humanity. I would like also to thank you for the health services, the health services, the health sector, Lacho Hospital particularly. Thank you very much for the so many people who have passed through your hands in Lacho Hospital and many other health uh, institutions. But allow me your grace to bring greetings from His Excellency General Yorika Gutam Seveni to you and to all the people here present. Ladit Lobo General Yorika Gutam Seveni Ochoalo Mot Bot Wun Duch Imat Janet Seveni Ochoalo Mot Bot Wun Duchu I I request that the people of Acholi support government programs now that the new year is here all children to school boys girls even children with disability ask your parish chief where your percentage of the parish development money is so that we fight poverty at household level i know that is one of the objectives of also the church Well, now bringing you back to the central, local governments have asked Parliament to amend the Public Finance Management Act of 2015 to address the challenges of returning unspent funds to the consolidated fund. The Public Finance Management Act of 2015 provides that all unspent balances from ministries, departments and agencies be sent back to the consolidated fund by 30th of June before the start of every new financial year. Let's take a look. The Public Finance Management Act 2015 provides that all unspent balances from ministries, departments and agencies be sent back to the consolidated fund by 30th June before the start of every new financial year. Kakumi Roko government has asked Parliament to amend this provision following the return of 400 million shillings to the consolidated fund which was meant to pay contractors of Kasenyi Health Centre 3. While commissioning Kasany Health Centre 3, the Prime Minister Robin Anabanja assured the contractors that Parliament 
will soon sit to approve the supplementary budget so that the funds are sent back to the district. <laughs> January 5th, when Parliament comes back from recess, we shall handle the supplementary budget, and the state is okay. Nabanja appealed to the public to seek for medical care in the established health facilities in the country. We have a police facility. 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 The State Minister for Transport and Buganga Easy West Legislator Fred Biamukama assured the people of continued service delivery. Kakumiro District Chief Administrative Officer Andrew Maweja says districts are finding it hard to pay contractors whose money is returned to the consolidated fund. Project says is crossing the Omoa on Ogumu. The right sentence is either parliament is reporting up with protest over over as it will be because our concern has been the money which normally goes back. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, as we hand over this facility, we are demanding over 400 million. And you know, the private sector, we are doing the bad here. But Kakumiro District Resident Commissioner Major David Matovo said that there is need to allow districts to retain the committed money because contractors are choking on debts. <laughs> Meanwhile, the residents of Kakindo sub-county are happy that the NRM government has fulfilled its promise of taking services closer to the people. In a related development, the Prime Minister also presided over the groundbreaking of two other health centre threes in Konko and Chikwaya sub-counties that will cost 1.77 billion shillings funded under UGIFT through the Ministry of Health. The UGIFT program contributes to the government's intergovernmental fiscal transfer reform program which aims to strengthen the financing funding and reduce the disparities in funding for service delivery <laughs>Saturday 7th January 2023 will go into records as one of the best days in the lives of many here. About 200 families received maize flour, a donation from a South Korean philanthropist, Kim Yoon. Nothing from me. Yeah, this, this is coming from God. She just loves you and then she just bring to you. Two months, three months, once uh, three, two months, three months, I am doing like this uh, five years ago. 
area local council leaders who helped identify the beneficiaries and providing a conducive environment for the distribution loud the Kim Yon for the gesture. I took the chisa, na took na ne batulete da kumele da tuweva za ubu gabiri zobo vude wa katonda kuvanga mubutu fu agambi enti kukaunga kubade konti yesu atu agala ilando uza leda ya gade fabo mkatanga ila tumwe yanza nyo tumwe yanze ge ila tubade tu sabo muti mango ugo tagujia uo e asigarenga atu atu yambila kwa kubantu wa fe kubwa chitufu bacheta agacha atu kore dolu walero the beneficiaries could not hide their excitement wano mkatanga emele tubula nyo e chokule chituta wanya tuwe yanze tuwe yanze ge ila wembanga mfunye kubu yambi ulala banyabu and to a self-proclaimed hustler, Oka Wenjangobi Isaac, other philanthropists should borrow a leaf from Kim Yon. They never wrote my name, but I've got posho. But what I'm missing is beans and charcoal. What I'm asking for, or requesting for just help, eh? I wish some other eh, people, not eh? Baba and some other organizations from anywhere to come. For mom lacking beans and charcoal. And maybe to add on this rent. Yeah, because our rent is for just daily. You pay two, five, three K, they give you a house daily. Docas Kimono, UBC TV News. <laughs> The Ahmadiyya community in Uganda has opened its 33rd annual convention at Rabua Chantamba village, Chibogo district, Chiboga district rather. The three-day convention is running under the theme Fundamentals of Establishing World Peace and it has attracted members of the Jals, Jalsa Salana community with the aim of strengthening their link with God. A number of activities have been carried out at the opening of the 33rd Ahmedia Annual Convention held at Rabwa Chantamba village in Chiboga district. The activities include Quran recitation, blood donation and fundraising drives among others. The resident district commissioner Chiboga, Mariam Nalwega Seruja, commended the work of the Ahmedia community in Chiboga district. the leader of the delegation of the Ahmedia community, Haj Swaib Katongole, said the conversion was affected by the COVID-19 and Ebola outbreak, which led to a delay of the Jal Sasalana conversion for the last two years. Orwale yote funa mukisa guapusi sinka na muri nyali ya Allah ukubera nti fena tu tuvera wam. Amukolo guna guvera kwa abantu baangi. Tegu sosola guvera kwa abasira mu abahamadia na abasira mu abatali bahamadia na abatali basira mu bana tu kunga na na bo. Secho choka tuvera kwa na ba geni abaiite. Orwale yote tuvada na ba geni. Nadala abakuru mu government okuvira dala ku LC1 chiamani owecha lochino okutukira dala mpozi ne ku RDC The conversion was opened by Muhammad Ali Kaire with the raising of the Ahmedia flag the three day conversion is running under the theme fundamentals of establishing world peace Sudat Kaye UBC News and that takes us for a short commercial break. When we return, we'll be back with more news tonight, so stay tuned. 
<laughs> it's super fast internet. Oh, it's a super camera. It's a super battery. Fun battery for Yeah, it's a super deal. Get the Kabode Super from MTN now at a reduced initial deposit of only 49,000 shillings and pay the balance in Pola and Pola for as low as 833 shillings per day. Grab this Super Kabode deal this Christmas and get 2 GB of free MTN data every month for 8 months. Get the Kabode Super now now from any MTN shop countrywide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Regulated by UCC. Shoppers, we have a variety of items like gift hampers, foods, garments, cosmetics, and all sorts of drinks. Enjoy your shopping experience this festive season at affordable prices in our fully stocked branches in the following areas in Tinder Station Road. Opposite Makere Business School along Port Bell Road, Duster Street opposite Nakasero Market and Garden City on Yusuf Lule Road. At Capital Shoppers, we offer you value for your money. To all our customers and suppliers, we thank you for your continuous support. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh. Paying your bills the old way. Let's go, let's go. Just need to buy some power. Mm. Paying your bills with the My Airtel app. <laughs> Bro, there's a line. You have the power in your pocket. The power to instantly pay your bills hassle-free. Unlock that power with the My Airtel app. Visit the App Store or Google Play now. <laughs> oh, you're back. Over the years, we've dreamed to get onto the world stage. We've had that dream crushed. We've witnessed a total defeat of what could have been our greatest moment. We've felt our spirits go up only to take a hard fall. We've had our fires burn out and leave on the scars. We've seized the wind and had it pulled from our grasp. We've seen pain and we've seen loss of the last fragments of hope. But <laughs> we are made of resilience and resilience never stops dreaming. So we will dream even bigger with the Cranes Cup Bowl 2026. Together, let's take Uganda to the next FIFA World Cup. Together, let's take Uganda to the next FIFA World Cup. For every now special you buy, we will give 50 shillings to the Uganda Cranes 2026 fund. You will also get the chance to choose how the Cranes Cup Bowl contributions are spent. Now special, official beer of the FIFA World Cup and official beer partner of the Uganda Cranes. Alcohol is not for sale to persons under 18. Please drink responsibly. Are you tired of high fees and slow transfer time when sending money? Look no further. Airtel Money is here to revolutionize the way you move your money. We have revised our rates and now sending money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda, East Africa and to the rest of the world has never been more affordable. Plus, you can trust Airtel Money to get your money where it needs to go quickly and safely. Simply dial star 185 hash and start sending money. Switch to Airtel Money today and experience unbeatable rates and top-notch services for all your local and international money transfer needs. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. The Uganda Small Scale Industries Association, USSIA, is a business member organization for micro, small and medium industrialists that has been in existence since 1979 with over 10,000 members and 16 regional offices countrywide. USSIA's core purpose is to enhance competitiveness through development, promotion, policy and advocacy for micro, small and medium enterprises. Find us at USSIA Building, Umasho Grounds, Lugogo, or call us on 0414-574-527-0774-130-454 or 0782-173-086.
happiness comes to us in many places. It's in knowing the mosquito net keeps our children healthy. The wife having the support of her husband. It's in deciding together when to have a baby. And for some, focusing on what's important right now. So what's your happiness? Make the right health decisions to ensure happiness for you and your family. I want to Welcome back. You're still watching the UBC News tonight, broadcasting live from Nile Avenue. We now delve into the world of business. The Zono Industrial Hub initiative has transformed the lives of former cattle rustlers in Karamoja sub-region. The initiative by President Yori Kaguta Museveni has effected this through equipping the former Karamojong warriors with life skills to engage in productive activities. This was testified during the graduation ceremony of the first batch of graduates at the Karamoja Zono Industrial Hub in Abatoa Village, Lokitela Ebu Sub County in Napark District. The State House Comptroller, Jen Bareche, has appreciated President Yoweri Museveni for initiating a project that has even seen former cattle wrestlers getting skilled to better their livelihoods through legal means. Close to 177 students in Karamoja sub-region have completed a five-month training at the Karamoja Zono Industrial Hub. <music> Bareche observed that the initiative aims at transforming Karamoja sub-region on the skills front. She encouraged other former warriors to join the initiative so that they could be part of Uganda's social economic transformation agenda. They can come and join these other ones, like the ones we just, we've just seen. Let them come, join these other ones, we transform them, we have our UPDF, we have our uh, people who train them, who, who cancel them. They are going to be like others. Please let, because we cannot separate them. Maybe if they are wasted, but if they are not yet wasted, being a warrior is not a brain problem. We just change their mindset and they get skilled with these other ones. She also handed over level one certificates from the Directorate of Industrial Training to the successful beneficiaries. Where is carpentry? Bas. Carpentry, carpentry, we are so proud of you. That's why I decided to thank you in front of people officially and give you some pocket money to take you so that you can know that you've motivated the whole country today. Thank you. Kotida District LC5 Chairperson Lote Paul Komol appreciated the program by offering Bareche a Karamejong tradition regalia. to move forward. The chairman, our boss, Chairman Karenga, uh, and the regional whip RDC, one mayor should join. It's not like that. It's not like that. One hand, one hand here. The manager of Karamoja Zono Industrial Hub, Charles Lotiang, said they admitted 182 students from 11 administrative units of Moroto District, Napak, Nakapiripirit, Nabiratuk, Amdat, Kotido, Abim, Kabong, and Karenga municipalities. Some of them were terrorists in the towns. Uh, some of them were unmanageable in centers and in their villages where they came from. So we saw as if these are like community rejects or what? I think you can thank uh, the, the state for the achievement that they have done. Among the beneficiaries were former Karamajong warriors. 
Charles Lotiang thanked President Museveni for his visionary leadership that enabled him to scale the youth through zonal industrial hubs. So these units we are talking about have a department and a PDM, have a department and a MIOGA. It means that we are breeding people to give us the much needed labor force that is supposed to drive and evolve the economy. So social, economic uh, development, empowerment of the youth has never been more clear. With this, we have tailors, we have carpenters, we have people who can give service at the lowest level. The beneficiaries were skilled in different vocational disciplines such as tailoring, carpentry, welding and hairdressing. It's super fast internet. Oh, it's a super camera. It's a super battery. Yeah, it's a super deal. Get the Kabode Super from MTN now at a reduced initial deposit of only 49,000 shillings and pay the balance in Pola and Pola for as low as 833 shillings per day. Grab this Super Kabode deal this Christmas and get 2 GB of free MTN data every month for 8 months. Get the Kabode Super now now from any MTN shop countrywide. Everywhere you go, MTN. Regulated by UCC. And now on the international scene, Kevin McCarthy has been elected Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives after heated exchanges which almost saw fellow Republicans come to blows. It took 15 rounds of voting for Mr. McCarthy to win the job despite his party having a majority in the chamber. It came after a dramatic pressure campaign played out live on the House floor as party rebel Matt Gaez was urged to vote for Mr. McCarthy. The Florida congressman was almost six holdouts who relented late on Friday. Earlier, amid heated scenes in the chamber, Mr. Gaez had almost come to blows with Representative Mike Rogers, a supporter of Mr. McCarthy. The Alabama congressman had to be physically restrained by colleagues as he bellowed and jabbed his finger at Mr. Gaez. The speaker sets the House agenda and oversees legislative business. The post is second in line to the presidency after the U.S. Vice President. U.S. President Joe Biden congratulated Mr. McCarthy for his win and said that he looked forward to cooperating, cooperating with the Republican Party. In a remarkable turnaround in the 12th round of voting, Mr. McCarthy was able to persuade 14 Republican holdouts to cast their vote for him. A 15th rebel followed suit for the 13th ballot. After the 13th ballot was adjourned, Mr. McCarthy insisted to reporters that he would have the voters to take the speakership on to the next round. And then in Ukraine, a, unilater a unilateral ceasefire called by Vladimir Putin appears to have had little effect on the ground with Ura Uranian. Ukrainian officials accusing Russians of opening fire in several areas. A Ukrainian rescue worker was killed in a Russian strike while Russian state TV said the city of Donsk was hit. Russia ordered a 36-hour unilateral ceasefire to coincide with the Orthodox Christmas. Ukraine rejected it saying Moscow might use it to reinforce troops. Russia's defense ministry insisted it was observing the truce along the entire line of contact starting at 1200 hours Moscow time on Friday. It said that its, its forces had only returned fire during the ceasefire when the Ukrainian army had attacked Russian positions. Air alerts were reported across Ukraine shortly after the purported truce began and then the governor of Kherson region said a strike on a fire station left rescuer dead and four other people wounded in the main city liberated in November by Ukrainian forces. The eastern city of Kramastok also came under attack and more than a dozen buildings were damaged. 
Ukrainian officials said. Artillery fire could be heard on both sides of the front line in the eastern city of Bakhmut, where the Russian forces have concentrated much of their firepower in an exchange. Now, furthermore, Mohamed Mahdi Karami and Sayed Mohamed Hosseini were found guilty of corruption on earth over their alleged involvement in the death of parliamentary officer. Human rights groups have denounced what they described as sham trial. The family of 22-year-old Mr. Karami said they were not permitted to meet him before he was killed. Prosecutors claimed paramilitary officer Ruhola Ajam Ajamian was stripped naked and killed by a group of mourners paying their respects to a recently killed protester. Protests against Iran's clerical establishment erupted in September following the death of the person in custody of a woman who was detained by mo morality police for allegedly wearing her hijab or her headscarf improperly. At least 516 protesters have been killed so far, including 70 children and 19,262 others arrested, according to the foreign best human rights activists news agency. It has also reported the deaths of 68 security personnel. Many of those who have been detained after protests have reportedly been subjected to enforced disappearing, incommunicado detention, torture, and other ill treatments. Are you tired of high fees and slow transfer time when sending money? Look no further. Airtel Money is here to revolutionize the way you move your money. We have revised our rates and now sending money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda, East Africa and to the rest of the world has never been more affordable. Plus, you can trust Airtel Money to get your money where it needs to go quickly and safely. Simply dial star 185 hash and start sending money. Switch to Airtel Money today and experience unbeatable rates and top-notch services for all your local and international money transfer needs. Airtel Money, instant, secure, borderless. And in the world of sports, Uganda's sports family has been reminded to focus on what is ahead in the new year. This was by the government chief whip, Hamza Nobua, who graced the National Council of Sports end of your party. Last year, Uganda's sports sector registered 450 medals from several engagements, making it arguably the best ever. But all that, according to government chief whip Hamson Obua, belongs to the past, with energies now needed to focus on 2023, which comes with its own requirements, notably the 2024 Olympics qualification pathway that is already open. The year 2023 is setting. 2022 is history. What is our commitment as the sports subsector? The first test is the Africa Cup, the, the All Africa Games, is our first test because this is where various sporting disciplines compete. We must set our goals, we must set our dreams, we must set our targets very, very high. The year 2023 stands before us like a new chapter. State Minister for Sports, Peter Ogwang, preached government commitment towards a better sports sector. How do we collaborate? How do we build synergies to help sports in Uganda to shine beyond what we expect? That's my message as we begin year 2023. I ask the private sector 
you are where we are meant to be to help this country achieve all its great potential in terms of sports development in the country. As government, we are committed in ensuring that sports flourishes in this country. National Council of Sports General Secretary Dr. Bernard Patrick Oguel highlighted the Olympics qualification plan and urged government not to reduce the sports sector budget but rather increase and expedite release of funds. We are in the second circle, when I say second, actually the third circle of our preparation for the next Olympics in Paris 2024. We are fast tracking 22 sport disciplines whom we need to support today and not tomorrow to participate in all the qualifiers in the respective countries that require funding, that require our athletes to be prepared, and we cannot wait for 2024 and government give us money at the last minute. We will not make it. From those gains I've mentioned, we want to request that our resources, which has been budgeted for, and appropriated by Parliament is released. On top of rewarding excellent federations and National Council of Sports staff, there was a special award for long-serving cycling, weightlifting, and handball federation presidents Samuonge Mahaba, Salim Mosoke, and Sheila Agonzibwe. John Burns Sentamu, UBC News. Exactly 40 minutes past the hour of 8 o'clock. Thank you very much for joining us for this bulletin. However, join us later on at 10 p.m. for another bulletin. My name is Wadulo Mark Arnold. Do enjoy yourselves for the rest of the programming. Inspiring Uganda. Are you tired of high fees and slow transfer time when sending money? Look no further. Airtel Money is here to revolutionize the way you move your money. We have revised our rates and now sending money from Airtel to other networks in Uganda, East Africa and to the rest of the world has never been more affordable. Plus, you can trust Airtel Money to get your money where it needs to go quickly and safely. Simply dial star 185 hash and start sending money. Switch to Airtel Money today and experience unbeatable rates and top-notch services for all your local and international money transfer needs. Airtel Money, instant, secure, borderless. Buy when anointing meets expectations, miracles are physical evidence of God's power. Join Pastor Sandra Bengana of the Road to Redemption Ministries every Sunday on UBC TV from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and live on Magic 100 FM from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. For counseling, you can contact our offices on plus 256-759-621-314. To be part of our services, we are located in Kampala City Center next to monitor publications with two services happening every Monday Command the Week service starting at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. and on Friday our main service starting at 6 p.m to 10 p.m. You can follow and stream live on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube, The Road to Redemption Ministries. Yes, you can worry. UBC, inspiring Uganda.
Uganda has rich culture and heritage sites spread all over the country. They include the Nyoro Rock paintings in Mora District, Eastern Region, Komuge Rock Art paintings in Bukede District, also in the Eastern Region of the country, Emin Pasha Slavery Site in Pakwach District, Wadelai Sub County in the West Nile Region, Fort Patiko or Fort Bika in Gulu District, Northern Region of Uganda, and Chibiro Salt Gardens on the shores of Lake Albert in the Southwest Region of the country. Let's have a sneak peek on these sites and what makes them famous. Nero Rock Paintings, Kumi District, Eastern Uganda. The Nero Rock Paintings exhibit real truth about the existence of the smartest people that came before the modern day civilization. Painted in red and white pigment on six granite rock shelters, estimates put the rock at anywhere between 3,000 and 12,000 years old. When you enter number two, there are some pictures showing that God was here. That's why these people are from Sosa, they come and pray there and they say God rested here. Because when you enter number two, you find that there are some paintings look like Virgin Mary, Jesus and so on, and the boats and so everything are there. What do the painted rocks symbolize? There are sites which can attract everybody to learn about history. This is Teso cultural site where Teso performed rituals a long time ago and still perform rituals from here, like fertility, blessing, healing, and uh, other cultural activities. There are activities here, like the people who come for perform rituals, like pray for a child to. A woman, if a woman fails to get a child, they come to pray from here to get a child. Or healings, or blessings. There is a special groups who always come here and perform. Pray, pray for somebody to get a luck or a chance. These painted rocks of different sizes and shapes, sometimes called a kindness stone, is simply a rock that someone has decorated with an inspirational message. Dolwe Island Rock Art Paintings Dolwe Island on Lake Victoria is an island full of fascinating rocks, mystery paintings and vital archaeological features endemic to the island. Located in Namayingo district, Dolwe Island has been in existence for over 300 to 500 years ago. The island found in the Busoga region has caves and unique ancient rock paintings in seven shrines. Dolwe Island's long age rock art is another place in eastern Uganda where one can see what history has the present and the future. The island, reachable by boats or ferries, is gifted. Its beautiful, extensive, rich artistic works were left drawn on the rocks by the early inhabitants of the island. Kakoro Rock Art Site in Wutebo District, eastern Uganda. The less known Kakoro rock art paintings are some of the less visited attractions in Uganda, yet very interesting to visit as it has rich history, hence one of Uganda's best and oldest historical sites. According to sources, it has been revealed uh, that uh, these were old, old, old rock paintings right from our grand, grand, grand parents who lived here some time back perhaps starting from right the time of uh, the Stone Age men. So these writings have been here. We've also tried uh, to do our level best to protect these paintings, but uh, I think it is very important that the government has come in to come and help us. You know, for us as residents, we've been taking this place not as so serious as we have come to realize. But since we have realized that uh, uh, it is a very good, important uh, 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 forex exchange for our country. We are also trying to do our level best to, to make sure that we educate all our people, our children, our grandchildren, and all our neighbors here to make sure that uh, these rock paintings are not be, uh, not be left uh, worn out. The Emin Pasha Fort, Pakwach District, West Nile Region, 
Located on the Albert Nile, the Emin Pasha fought his famous for fighting slave trade in the late 1880s. A physician, explorer, and governor of the equatorial province of Egyptian Sudan, Emin Pasha contributed vastly to the knowledge of African geography and natural history, ethnology, and languages. Emin Pasha, as we know him by that name, I don't know how he chose this area, but he came here in 1885 and he was welcomed by the community of this place. This place is called Pakwenyo in Wadlai. The one who received or welcomed them in Pasa was my grandfather by the name of Olele. That was in 1885. His grave is somewhere near here. Then they came to here peacefully and I didn't hear that they were doing their trade again here of getting people sold to them as slaves. The Emin Pasha forts were built to fight slave trade. This piece of land which were given by the community of the place because of the peaceful coexistence they had with uh, Emin Pasha and the team before. Now, the community at this moment are seeing sign of hope in what they have given to the government. When they see the structure are being maintained, as you see now, we are rehabilitating the sites. We have been living here without much conflict with the community members. Okay, sometimes we have small engagement, but we have never had a serious fight that the community are rehabilitating against the site had not been happening. So basically, uh, we had people have been benefiting from the site, like the students. We have students coming from different universities, Gulu, Makerere, Lera, and the lower primary schools. They come to learn. They come to get what the detail was. So the history still remains. And uh, what we have remained with, as I was saying, we have the trenches, we have the prison cells, we have the monument down the, uh, the, the, the landing sites and the beautiful Nile, the River Nile. Mehmed Emin Pasha, original name Edward Schnitzer, was born on March 28, 1840 in Poland and died in October 23, 1892 in Kanema, Congo Free State, now the Democratic Republic of Congo. Fort Patiko or Baker's Fort. The place referred to as Fort Patiko or Baker's Fort was a military structure that served as the collection point for the slaves during the slave trade business. It was built by early explorers led by Sir Samuel Baker in 1864 after it was discovered by him and his wife Florence Baker. It happens in 1,200 years, that's how the people started coming here. And uh, the people here, the way they welcome people, when they said Kobango, they said you respond, Kope, that means how are you? That's fine. You can respond like that. And for you, welcoming you to come, they said, Afo Yobino. That means welcoming you as a visitor at home. Baker's Fort is of mega importance. At Baker's Fort, dark markings are assumed to be the blood splatters of slaves who could not make it to the market due to the long distances and who were beheaded at this spot and their blood is still very visible on the rocks. Sir Samuel Baker served as the Governor General of the Equatorial Nile Basin, today South Sudan and Northern Uganda, between April 1869 and August 1873, which he established as the province of Equatoria. For this place witnessed and pleasant background to the humanity of the slave trade, it offers a field to explore part of its history that dates back to the 19th century. Chibiro Salt Gardens. Chibiro Salt producing village demonstrates a unique example of an industry which has sustained its people for eight to nine hundred years ago and continues to do so perhaps for posterity from the fishing on Lake Albert. The people of Kibiru 
have depended on the production of ash salt which is obtained by recycling residual earth with fresh soil which is spread on salt gardens for the salty water to get absorbed by capillary system. The Chibiro population therefore have depended for its livelihood on the exchange of salt and fish for food through time with farming communities on the plateau above the Ugandan side of the Western Rift Valley. The village therefore forms an important cultural site which has combined both archaeology and ethnography through time in the production of ash salt. This site has been around for over 1,000 years. It has been there time and memorial. We were born, we found it there, and we just we thank the community for conservating it and keeping it the way it is. Uh, some of the benefits of, of documenting, we expect domestic tourism to increase. Uh, we expect Ugandans to know about this site because I'm sure most people have not known about it, that it existed. But see the nature, see how beautiful Uganda is. Some of these sites that are featured in this documentary are justified by their prehistoric values and hence recognized by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO. All the tangible, cultural and heritage sites are under the Department of Uganda Museums in the Ministry of Tourism, Wildlife and Antiquities. Inspiring Uganda. Good day to you, our dear viewer. It's a pleasure to have your company right here. It is a national broadcaster. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you, and you're watching. 365 days. My name is Sandra Kahunde and I'm joined by Rukiti Edward Kijanangoma. Pleasure to have you here on 365 days and Sandra, it's been a year that has had a lot of achievements. Very true. Uh, you know, um, a year that came to us, long awaited after the past two years of, um, you know, lots of struggles with the COVID-19 uh, pandemics and epidemics here and there. But here we, we came through the 2022 and embraced it. And of course, how ending it in uh, style with the World Cup 2022 in Qatar and of course Argentina, especially Lionel Messi lifting that trophy for the first and I think the last time because we understand he's not coming back. It was a year that we all were waiting for, away from the two years of a lockdown and a lots of uh, challenges. Yes, COVID-19 ravaging economies of the world, not of course uh, forgetting our country, Uganda. But we do thank the government of uh, Uganda led by the able NRM uh, you know, party, mm -hmm. that uh, the economy has, you know, you know, it is now stabilizing and we can say that uh, things are looking much, much better, although there are some uh, difficulties here and there. But we do thank God that uh, mm -hmm. things are showing up well. All those particular activities regarding the president uh, will be happening in this very episode of 365 Days. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you just joined us, welcome on board. You're watching 365 Days, straight into activities. The origin of the struggle for Uganda's independence from the British 